Okay, we may start now. Thank you for being here for this uh, session on uh, energy and uh, environment. Uh, during the different uh, session of this uh, WPC, the huge importance of energy and environment uh, has been highlighted several times. And in fact, in times uh, of a multiple crisis, this workshop today will discuss the opportunities and challenges to achieve the goals of energy security, sustainability, affordability, acceptability, and resilience from the perspective of different geographic shareholders maps uh, out credible and realistic pathway through this most demanding period. So around the table, there is a, a, a wonderful panel to cover all the dimension of the energy and environment challenges. And so I will give the floor to the different uh, uh, panelists for uh, 10 minutes. After each presentation, I suggest to have some Q&A session, a short Q&A session, focusing on the specific content of the presentation. And uh, at the end, uh, we will have uh, uh, time for a general debate between the panelists and uh, the, the audience. Uh, so uh, it's my privilege to, to, start, uh, to start by uh, presenting uh, my views on uh, the present situation of uh, the energy uh, sector. And uh, clearly, after COVID crisis in 2020, the energy sector has been faced in 2021 to an unprecedented crisis and to the consequences of the Ukrainian conflict for the last 18 months. So uh, the uh, growth of the energy price had a major impact on uh, inflation worldwide. This slide presents the percentage of countries with an annual inflation greater than 6%. Most of the countries in the world have been faced to an economic shock similar to what we experienced during the oil shocks of 1973 and 1979. Oil price increased rapidly at the beginning of the year from 80 to $120 per barrel due to the uncertainties linked to the Ukrainian conflict. This growth was mitigated by the possible impact of the crisis on the world economy. For the last months, the price went back to the pre-crisis level, so the impact of oil on the inflation is rather limited. Gas electricity market, more specifically in Europe, has been faced to a first crisis in 2021 due to the market design followed by the consequences of the Ukrainian crisis in 2022. The prices of gas increased from 9 euros per megawatt hour in 2020 to 47 euros per megawatt hour in 2021. Then the uncertainty on the availability of Russian gas pushed up the price to 125 euros per megawatt hour in 2022, with peaks at 240 in August. In the US, the gas market was more volatile than during the previous years, but the gas price rarely exceeded $20 per megawatt hour, and today, the price in the US is five times lower than in Europe. The price of electricity followed the price of gas. 113 euros per megawatt hour in 2021, 297 in 2022 compared to the average price in 2020 at 35 euros per megawatt hour. The impact on the energy spending in Europe is huge. 1,200 billion uh, euros in 2022 compared to 
580 in 21 and only 310 in 2020, which represents 8% of the uh, European GDP in 2022 compared to 4% in 2021 and only 2.2% 2 .2 in 2020. Rapidly after the Russian invasion, the European countries and the EU Commission took measures. An embargo on uh, Russian coal was decided uh, on uh, 8th of April and rail later on Russian oil in the, on the 6th of June. And these measures has been taken also in most of the developed countries uh, in the world. An ambitious energy plan has been decided, Repower uh, EU, in order to cope with the dependence of EU countries from Russian supplies. Most of the countries took measures in order to reduce the impact of the price increase on the final consumer or to promote energy sobriety. A decision was taken at EU level to set up a cap on the price of Russian oil and gas. And uh, I remind that in uh, June 2022, the US government launched a massive plan of $400 billion uh, in order to sustain US economy, the Inflation Reduction Act. As a result of these measures taken in Europe and in many other countries, the OECD imports of Russian oil dropped by 50%, 2.5 million barrels per day. However, this drop has been largely compensated by Russian oil export to non-OECD countries, especially <coughs> China and India. In one year, India, in Indian imports of Russian oil has been increased by a factor of 10. Russian export to EU by pipeline dropped from 10 BCM in March uh, 2022 to 1 1.5 BCM in December. And at the same time, LNG, Russian LNG export increased significantly. At the end of 2022, the share of Russia in the EU uh, gas imports is only 10%. Immediately after the first embargo measures, uh, the price of Russian oil dropped by 30% in order to find consumers. In fact, uh, Russia was obliged to reduce the price in order to increase its export towards non-OECD countries. We should not forget the major event which happened just a year ago, the sabotage of the gas pipe Nord Stream 1 and 2. These pipes were playing a major role on the gas supply of Germany. On the 26th of September 2022, several explosions destroyed the gas pipe of the Danish coast. It is the first time that such a vital infrastructure is attacked in a peace zone. Who is responsible of such a sabotage? There is no clear evidence. However, the clear winner of this uh, sabotage is the US. If such an infrastructure may be attacked during a peacetime, what are the implications on all the vital infrastructure we rely on, both energy telecommunication? The recent attack of the Baltic connector from Finland to Estonia may be another warning call. Some key figures, Russian revenues from energy dropped significantly. The share of Russia on the EU gas supply was reduced from 40% to 10%. EU investment in renewable energy and heat pumps increased by 40%. The electric vehicle markets increased by, by, by 15%, and the EU CO2 emissions were reduced by 2.5%. So in a nutshell, countries, the European countries are the guest losers of this major energy crisis we are faced at. This will have a significant impact 
on our economies. And clearly, the US are the winners. As far as Russia is concerned, the impact on its economy is rather limited on the short term. However, on the longer term, Russia will have difficulties to compensate its European outlets. For the last few weeks, the dramatic conflict between Israel and the Hamas is bringing a new dimension to the world energy crisis, but for the time being, we didn't see a, uh, an evidence of what could happen due to this new, uh, new crisis. So this is uh, the, uh, the, the scene I wanted to, to describe. And uh, before I leave the floor to the uh, different uh, panelists, are there some questions? To, uh, to ask or some comments. Yeah, please. Just a brief question regarding you, exports. you. Yeah, just a brief uh, question regarding Indian exports to uh, Europe. Do we have numbers regarding how much Indian exports to Europe have increased? That would be interesting to see how much of the gap India and China ac actually filled that, you know, the void that was left by Russia. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. okay. Okay, great. Thank you. But as far, you know, uh, as far as oil is concerned, uh, nobody knows exactly where the oil is uh, is going. But clearly, the imports of Russian oil has been over India has been increased by a factor of 10. That that's another story. <laughs> Yes, please. Thank you so much, Anna Borchak from Romania. Thank you so much for a great presentation. But uh, you didn't mention nuclear, the energy from nuclear, uh, which, you know, we know that France has a, such a great tradition. Romania has such a great tradition. And we are actually working very closely together at the EU level. And we all know that the energy from uh, nuclear is one of the cleanest, affordable, and um, more reliable sources of energy. So maybe in your presentation, you might want to consider to add that part as well. And maybe later on, we can, during the debate, I could intervene in a more elaborative way. Thank you. Don't understand uh, on my presentation that I underestimate the role of nuclear, but I was focusing on uh, a world, uh, an energy world in a deep crisis. And if I would have, unfortunately, if I, I would uh, 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 raise the flag of a, a, a problem of nuclear, it is the availability of nuclear in Europe, which uh, in France, which have been reduced dramatically due maintenance issues uh, uh, due to the COVID and also due to uh, technical problems. Fortunately, we are out of this uh, situation. But in August 2022, for the first time in 30 years, uh, France was a net importer of electricity. But uh, clearly now I think there is an increasing consensus in France and in Europe in order to develop, uh, the, uh, to, to develop nuclear energy, to base the energy transition uh, in, on, uh, on nuclear, and there is also within European countries an increasing uh, consensus, but there are also some countries strongly opposed to nuclear energy. You know what I mean. Olivier, it was not a bad technique, it was new norms. The reason why a nuclear power plants were closed in France was mainly for no normatic reasons rather than bad technology. It's important to say. So if uh, there is no more question, uh, you may afterwards uh, ask a question. You may afterwards uh, ask a question. So now...